they're like my babies and obviously when you have a child you're not gonna want your child to get sick or or die or anything of that sort Cole Gardner is somebody who helps to restore and replenish the marine life and take care of the corals. The aim really is to try and restore the populations of two types of coral, uh, elkhorn and staghorn, which are two species that really are critically important for the ecology of Caribbean reefs. Um, they're, today they're quite hard to find, quite, quite rare, some of, especially staghorn. They have died out across the whole of the Caribbean, probably 80 to 90 percent, closer to 90 percent at this time. So now during this project we want to help them to uh, recover around on the island, especially here for the staghorn on the main island of St. Vincent. During the dives we have done to search for the coral fragments or colonies, we have not found any staghorn fragments. So now we have been lucky enough, we are working together with, uh, we are Myro over in Myro, who is the coral gardeners team there, and also sustainable grenadines in Union. And over there, they still have access to the staghorns. So because of that, we have been able to collect the staghorn fragments from these areas and brought them back into the mainland. Before the 1950s, they were extremely abundant. In fact, Elkhorn uh, was about 80% of the corals you'd find on the shallow reefs. Staghorn was about 50% of the coral in the slightly deeper reef around five to six meters around, around there, the mid reef. Whether it be economic in the tourism industry or fisheries sector like myself, whether you're looking at the beauty of coral reefs from a recreational point of view, or you're looking at the protection that our coral reefs give to our coastal areas, it's definitely a resource that is worth looking at uh, worth preserving for our future generations. And that's why this initiative is one of great importance uh, for the Caribbean, for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I work together with, uh, at the moment, 16 locals that have now come for the Coral Restoration Project where they first get their training in to be a PADI certified open water diver. And then after they do the certification for the diving, then they get the technical information about the coral restoration project we are running. So they do some lessons, some school lessons, then they do some practical actions, how to build structures that we later on will implement in the coral nursery. Then they have the training on the water in the nursery, how to implement the structures, also how to populate them with the different type of fragments. The reason for me doing this kind of work is because I always dreamt of doing something positive for the environment and for like the world, especially my country. Like I know there is not always a lot of things like the young people can do, but at least we can start somewhere to make a difference and make some changes in the world also. The program is really to find the survivors. That's the first thing we need to do is go out and look for the survivors, look for the resilient survivors, because if they survived, that means they had something going that the others didn't and uh, those are the ones we want to propagate so we build nurseries and we bring in as many different genotypes so different genetic stock of the same species and we propagate them in large numbers so we have literally thousands of these corals growing in nurseries and then we can start planting back on the reef the nursery is located in Cumberland Bay right off the edge around just there's a little rock in the water uh, it's about nine meters down and we go and we collect fragments from different places because with stag horns or uh, elk horns they, they don't really reproduce unless you have different genetics so we try to take from different places and then we take them and then we hang them on trees keeping them clean is like really important we have to make sure that they don't have algae although we have like little fish now that's also helping us clean because um, they eat the algae off of the nylon that we hang the fragments on we keep the nylon clean just so the algae don't grow on the coral and the idea is 
to plant not only thousands or tens of thousands, possibly a hundred thousand, but also to make sure that they reproduce sexually. So at the full moon, once a year, these corals will spawn. They will release thousands of egg and sperm, they're hermaphrodites, and uh, that's what we want to bring back as well, is the sexual reproduction so that the reef system regenerates well beyond where we're working, so it spreads to other reefs. The good thing we see now, or the good success, is how uh, well the fragments, the coral fragments, are doing in the nursery. We can see the success rate, how many of them actually survive, is very high. I would say at least 85% of all of the fragments, they survive. And it's, we see the same with the outplanting that we have started now. It's between 85 and 90% of what we have outplanted until now, which is a little bit more than 400 fragments up in Cumberland. 85 to 90% is still alive. And it's a very good sign for us to see that the success rate is so high, because then we know also that we can continue expanding these practices with good success. The purpose of our coral restoration is to restore the corals to the nat as naturally natural as possible when I say natural meaning to bring back the reef because I know like from my brothers have told me like stories where when they went diving and stuff there was a lot and I didn't meet that much and I've been diving for a really long too also so I've seen the impact that we've caused like each of us have our part that we pay to destroy the ocean also the land so now with this coral restoration we just hope that we can restore the diversity in the ocean where there is to bring back more fishes to the coastlines and from heavy waves hurricanes like all these type of stuff and then we want to bring some of the awareness we have done some school classes for the kids and we also will do some now where we invite some of these classes to go out to the nursery on a glass bottom boat together with Dive and Tillis and this is to show the school kids more about the work we are doing so they can see it face to face and then they can learn a little bit more why is it so important to do this restoration, the coral restoration work we are doing. It has become a passion instead of a job where I get really really sad if a coral dies or if it starts bleaching or if I don't get to clean the trees, all the trees. I get really worried, like, okay, maybe when I go back next week I can finish. And because now it's my passion, it's really hard for me to look at it as a job because they're like my babies. And obviously when you have a child, you're not going to want your child to get sick or, or die or anything of that sort. I swear, like, this is the first time in my life I actually feel like if I'm doing something that is actually impacting something. By getting our stakeholders involved, by getting the Vincentian public involved, we not only get the buy-in of our fishers, of our community members, but as a nation. We look at this important resource, we look at the ways in which we can solve some of the issues for not only our present generation, but our future generation to come for a bigger, brighter St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Well, how do I feel? I won't lie. Like, I feel really fulfilled. Like, like I, I know I still have more to do, but I really enjoy it. Like, I, I love it so much. Like, I swear, like, this is the first time in my life I actually feel like if I'm doing something that is actually impacting something. I'm absolutely overjoyed with this project. Um, it gives me comfort, a peace of mind. I'm very content. Um, everybody looks for looking for an office job and I'm here having the best time of my life. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people are jealous of my job. So <laughs> that's a plus for me.